Lance Dean here with Escape the Gaming. Uh, I've got some more, finally some time off. I had to work last weekend partially. I was going to play some Battlefield Hardline, which again, it never materialized. I just never seemed to have the time. Um, I'm actually got today off. This is a Thursday I'm filming this on, and I got tomorrow off too. I start an enormous job next Monday, but I've got like a four day weekend, which I'm really excited about. Finally, I got a chance to sink some time into some games. Uh, I went out and bought Dishonored, the uh, definitive edition for the PS4 yesterday, and God, it really looks good. I'm really happy I bought it since I never really played it. I played the first level or two, uh, Escaping the Prison or something, in the very beginning when I first got it on launch for the Xbox 360, but I never got it since then. And uh, just knowing that you can get it with all the DLC and graphical upgrades and all that was exciting. So I bought that yesterday along uh, with another um, another Blu-ray, uh, which I was excited about picking up. I got that, I think it was Dawn of Planet of the Apes in 3D, which I was excited to get. But what I'm doing today is I'm going to go and trade in a bunch of games. I, I believe in recycling games. I've got like the first Uncharted game, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3... Uh, the Dewey Sex Human Revolutions Director's Cut, which I bought brand new. I haven't played it yet because you cannot install it in the hard drive. So because of that, I talked to a friend of mine. He goes, well, Dean, just get the PS3 version where you can install it. So I'm going to see if I can find a PS3 version of this and take this back. I also have the, the original version of this as well. Since I bought Dishonored, I mean, this is brand new. It's in excellent shape, but I'm going to trade this Dishonored in. And since I just got the 3D Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I haven't even watched this. I bought this brand new. I'm probably going to take a bath on it. But they give you a pretty fair trade-in value, or they'll pay you cash. They give you more value in trade-in. So I'm going to take all of these to my dimple store, my local mom-and-pop retail you know, movie store, video game store, and trade them in. Let me put them back in the bag here. Um, so I'm excited about that, that I can get a chance to recycle games. I believe in it. I think it works great. Um, it gives people a chance to buy many games, dirt cheap, used, which I certainly appreciate. I, there's nothing you know better than buying video games. Um, that's a beautiful fall day today. <clears throat> Gorgeous day out. I'm just leaving my homestead now. There's Oliver, my cat, is coming out there. He's getting prepared with his winter coat for the winter. It's going to be a cold wet season, I think. We get this El Nino tropical storm that's supposed to hit hot and heavy. So we had a new roof put on our house, and uh, which is extremely expensive. And I'm anxious to um, <clears throat> anxious to try to get everything prepared. i got to, you know, secure a few things in the backyard for the heavy rains that are coming. But uh, anyway, it's exciting to have some time off. This is rare that I get this time of year, I'm pretty busy. People are trying to get their homes painted before Thanksgiving and Christmas, and so you get a lot of last-minute uh, interior painting in the cabinets. I've got so much work planned uh, coming up here, and it's nice to finally have some time off. A lot of people wondered why. Well, God, why did you get so worked up over this Mad Max game? It's just a game, dude. Just wait for the patch, and you'll be able to play it again, and that makes sense. There's nothing that's good advice, and there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, my problem is patience. <laughs> it's, it's always been a problem of mine, impetuousness and patience. Uh, but at the end of the day, I have limited time. And September is the only month when the kids go back to school, typically here in the U.S., <clears throat> I get a, a, a small window of a few weeks that I can really look forward to gaming. And usually that's when I get all my gaming done. That's how I got 100 hours and... Um, GTA 5 last year at the same time last year was because I, you know, had, I waited till September and then I could really put major time into it. Um, and I also get January. Right after Christmas it slows down for the month of January. So basically I've got two months out of the year that I can count on <coughs> for gaming if I want to get some serious time into a big game. <coughs> That's why in a way I don't mind the shorter campaigns of Call of Duty or Battlefield 4, uh, where they're, you know, five or seven hours to do, because at least those I can do, and I can complete them where I only have usually an hour of gaming per night. Yesterday, I had maybe a little less than an hour, 45, 50 minutes to put into Mad Max, so it's going to take me forever to finish that game. I'm at 60% completion, 
uh, and I've got, God, I think I've got, um, it says over two days and a few hours, so I've got, you know, 52 hours or so in it so far in my second replay of it since I accidentally deleted my save file of 102 hours, <clears throat> but I'm just happy to be back in the game again. The game, they patched it right after my last rant, ironically. It took them about a month to get to it, but they did patch it. Uh, now it looks awesome. They get, they changed the blur effect. They had this strange high-speed blur effect that looked interesting, but it just made it hard to see what was going on at high speed. They fixed that. Um, the patch certainly fixed the, the missing map. That immediately came back on all my save files, thankfully, which I was very pleased. And, um, uh, you know, frame rate was fixed as well. It had an extremely bad frame rate all over the map. Now I, it hasn't skipped a beat. It's perfectly smooth. And it holds right around 30 frames a second. So I'm very happy with that. And there were various audio bugs, uh, which were fine before the last patch, and then it started acting up. So <clears throat> thank God the game's working fine. Uh, of course, now, by now, I'm already set to play other games. Now I've got other my uh, sights on Battlefield Hardline. Uh, I found my strategy guide. I didn't even know I had it. And just, uh, I was actually thinking of playing that online. Um, if I get PlayStation Plus, the Battlefield Hardline, and possibly Battlefield 4, I may do some online gaming. Maybe near the end of the year, when things slow down for Christmas, I might try. I've had so many friends that have asked me to play online, and I just haven't done it. I should give it another shot, but uh, as, as people know, that's not my focus. My focus is mostly on solo gaming. That's what I live for. That's what I look forward to. Um, but um, <clears throat> so um, I'm losing my train of thought. This is what happens with uh, too much weed over the years and partying. Your, your, your short-term memory goes right out the window. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, I'm on my way to the you know game store. I'm going to trade these games in. I'll probably get that Uncharted collection. It looks really good. Plus, I'm anxious to see if I can find... Um, uh, maybe find some old retro games as well on there. I always look at the old original Xbox games. i got a great selection of PlayStation 1 and 2 games as well. I've, I'm pretty much rounding out my collection. I mean, i got like 10 games here and 20 games there that I'm looking for, but they're becoming harder to find. I'm more than likely going to have to go online to locate those, but I still never give up hope. I just found the wonderful Jedi Academy because I took the time to look. I went to a new dimple store. They just made a new location across town, which I rarely go over there by this big mall my wife wanted to go to. And my wife was thrilled. She goes, oh, you actually want to go to the mall with me? And I go, yeah. I said, I'd love to. <clears throat> and uh, what she didn't know is it's, I wanted to go is because... Uh, I knew this new dimple store was close by, so I was patient and waited for her to do all her shopping. And then afterwards, I go, oh, by the way, let's pop by dimples. And she goes, oh, I didn't know they had one over here. I go, oh, yeah, let me just pop in and look. Sure as hell, they had not one but two copies of Jedi Academy, which I was extremely happy to find. So that really uh, was a giant win for me. I'm ex now I got the you know Jedi Outcast and Academy. Uh, there's still a couple Star Wars games left. I think I'm looking for... Um, Jedi Starfighter, if I can find it, and then Knights of the Old Republic 2, which would be really nice to have for my collection. I have the first one, which I haven't even played yet. So those I know I can get. I'm not, you know, going to lose uh, any sleep over not having those immediately in my collection. Hop on. <clears throat> so this is a beautiful day for a nice little jaunt down in my local store. Let's take a little time. I'll try to sneak the camera in because they have so much licensed music playing. I got to be careful not to have any sound recorded, but I can always talk over it after the fact. Traffic's heavy today. <laughs> yeah, it's a great day for a drive. <laughs> so I'm anxious to kind of go through their older games. I haven't been to this Roseville store in a couple weeks now. 
and usually by now they'll have some new stock and I try to go in there and look every once in a while every few weeks just to see if there's something new sometimes it'll, it'll change daily you just never know but but yeah like I said patience has always been a problem of mine um, I have bought you know the PS1 right at launch I bought the PS2 at launch the original Xbox I bought a few months after launch I kind of waited I wasn't sure if I was gonna get it and then I saw a game coming out that I had to have and you had to either get it on PC or the original Xbox it wasn't gonna become available on the PlayStation 2 so I took the plunge and bought one and man am I glad I did to this day the original Xbox is my favorite retro console I love collecting for it I have such a great time <clears throat> with that console. I've been playing Jedi Outcast, slowly getting back into it. I've also watched a complete playthrough of Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. I've got a guy in South America I've been following. He does a beautiful uh, job playing the game. He knows those games very well and does great commentary. And I've really enjoyed um, his playthrough of both of those games, which is what got me excited about playing, because there's parts of the Jedi Outcast where there's secret areas I just couldn't find, and I love to go online and look, and sure as hell, you'll find someone that, you know, has uncovered all the secret areas and knows the game backwards and forwards. That's what I love about YouTube. There's so many great ways that you can look, you know, for what you're looking for, uh, with, you know, with a game or playthrough if you're lost, and, or even on Mad Max, or a couple... Uh, things I discovered I had I couldn't find so I went on people looked at people's let's plays and sure as hell there was someone that's figured it all out and uh, there was a secret item that you didn't know was there or whatever so that's the beauty of YouTube and back in the day we didn't have that I didn't even really have strategy guides for most of my games for years and you just had to spend hours searching and looking for things now my time is valuable and um, I don't always have the time to um, we're almost there now don't always have the time to um, to give things a shot, you know, to play things all the way through. It's very frustrating. I have so many unfinished games, and I wish that wasn't the case. I really want to uh, get to the point to where I finish more games, <clears throat> and that's something I'm working on. So I got Battlefield Hardline. I'm dying to play. I put the new Dishonored Definitive Edition in last night. And man, it looks good. Uh, the game is not a, doesn't isn't a stellar remaster compared to many other ones like The Last of Us. It doesn't play in 60 frames uh, per second. It's only locked in at 30, but it's a smooth 30. And uh, the graphics do look a little bit better from the Xbox version. It's kind of a painterly, almost like a hand rendered painting. Uh, the way that uh, you know everything is uh, the graphic presentation on Dishonored. So it's not the kind of a thing that. Um, <clears throat> where it really lends itself to a HD, re, uh, you know, kind of a remaster. But what you get is tons of DLC and lots of extra additional content, things that were slowly released via, you know, the, you know, you had to pay for the DLC. So for I thought for $40, considering I've never played it, and now I can play it on the new-gen system and use the PS4 share button to share my favorite screenshots or gameplay is exciting. That's why I love the remasters. I don't understand the hate... Uh, for them. I know many of us don't want to pay the same price for something. I mean, even this Uncharted collection is kind of pricey at 60 bucks, but you're getting all three games. I don't know if there was DLC and extras uh, on these games. I think they're pretty straightforward. I don't know about multiplayer and all that, but um, considering I only played all of Uncharted 1 and only maybe a third of Uncharted 2, it'll, it's exciting that I can play them at 60 frames a second in 1080p graphics. It looks amazing. I've watched four or five wonderful reviews and gameplay videos on the Uncharted collection, <clears throat> which is why I'm on my way to the store now to get I could get it anywhere at Walmart or Target or GameStop, but uh, I like to recycle my games. And I'm, I'm certainly never going to touch the PS3 versions when I can play a superior version on the PS4. So uh, that's why I never understood all the hate, you know, with the remasters and all that. I, I, I think it's fine. I, I think people blow it way out of shape. Um, naturally, we want new games, and I'd like to see a lot more games and have them concentrate on making new IPs and new games, not just the same rehashes of the or same franchises over and over and over, which is what we get. Every year you get a new Battlefield and Assassin's Creed and 
the Far Cry, and you know nothing against the Far Cry in particular. That I'm looking forward to that new Primal one. It does look good as long as it's offline and not some new online deal. So, in fact, eventually I might even get that special Far Cry um, Xbox 360 version where you get Far Cry 2, 3, and Blood Dragon. I do have Blood Dragon already installed in my hard drive, but it would be kind of neat to have them all in one package. So, the time is wonderful. Right now, you can get incredible deals on last-gen games. I mean, I can't believe how cheap they are for... Um, For PlayStation 3 and uh, Xbox 360 games, really good deals, especially if they're slightly used and in good shape. I'm really happy with that. Here's my dimple store right here. It's my spot out front where I usually park. And it's a done deal. Selection, but I scored on the PlayStation 1 games. I found Jet Moto 3, which I've been looking for for the longest time. I've never played this. I'm shocked that they had it. So I'm just delighted to find this for $3. And I got the wonderful Need for, uh, Need for Speed High Stakes <clears throat> on disc. So I can play it years later. Why the new one can't be like this, God only knows. But I'm very happy to have this. This was $4. And then I got, uh, which is what I came here for, the Nathan Drake Uncharted Collection, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Very excited about that. So I scored it, and, you know, they gave me a pretty good uh, amount for my games and what have you, so I picked up everything pretty cheap, and I'm real happy about that. It's a, a good deal. So now we're going to head back, head back to my store, um, back to the house. And I'll finish my rant. I'm trying to remember where I left off here. I think I was talking about, um, you know, patience. Uh, like I said, I bought, you know, the PlayStation 1 at launch and the PlayStation 2 at launch and the original Xbox probably within four months, I think, or around there after launch. Uh, but when the time the Xbox 360 came out, I wasn't on the Internet. And so I didn't know, uh, like we do today, with all the new news and hype, you didn't have all that. So I, I knew that it was coming out. I, we didn't even have a game store in the area that I lived down in the Southern California high desert at the time. So it was exciting to, um, uh, to kind of find out that the Xbox 360 was coming out. I love the original Xbox so much. I mean, that's what I wanted initially even more than the PS3, uh, but frankly, at the time, I couldn't afford either one. I really wanted them in the worst way, and it just wasn't going to happen. Uh, we were going through a lot of financial tough times in kind of the mid to late 2000s, trying to hang on to my, you know, big house and property that I had down in Southern California, um, and all my cars, and I ended up losing everything in like 2007, unfortunately. I lost, you know, five beautiful muscle cars, and my Bronco, and um, <clears throat> my house, and everything, and I've never regained all that stuff. I've lost it permanently, so getting a new, expensive new console was kind of out of the uh, out of the realm <clears throat> of possibility for me at, at that time, but what's interesting is that I, it's probably just as well, because look at the Red Ring of Death with the Xbox 360, so I never experienced that. I never had that, so by the time I bought the 2009 elite model with the Falcon chip, uh, all those problems were fixed, and it wasn't an issue, which was great. Uh, so, in a way, that kind of shows you it's almost best not to get things at launch, just in case there's technical problems or things that they find out, you know, after the fact, naturally. So, um, and then years later, I bought the, or, or I got as a gift, the PlayStation 3. Lot of traffic today. I gotta try to get around these trucks. But, um, 
So, uh, you know, years later, I got the, you know, the Xbox and the PlayStation 3, uh, five and seven years after launch, respectively, and, and it, it kind of was a, it was bittersweet. I was so far behind by then with all the games, I couldn't catch up fast enough, and I'm still behind. I still haven't uh, played many of the wonderful Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games that were available, sadly, I, even though I wanted to. So, um, this time around, when I, you know, I think it was 2012, there's, you know, rumblings of the new PlayStation 4, Sony's new console coming out, and, you know, the new Xbox console coming out, and that's what I wanted. I was really excited about getting, you know, at least one of them. I said, I don't know if I can afford both at launch, but we'll see, and I did the research. In fact, just this morning on Facebook, I posted a picture of my PS4 hooked up right after I bought it to my old TV setup, and I was so happy with that with the console to buy it at launch. It's the first console I bought at launch since the PlayStation 2. So I took a chance, and who knows? It might have had issues and problems. I was very fortunate not to have any issues with it. And still, the thing operates very quietly and smoothly. I love the operating system. I don't have any complaints. Uh, you have an occasional update, but like what I did when I come home from work is that if I have a new game like this Uncharted Collection, the minute I get in the door, I turn the machine on, I insert the disc, I give it a chance to, to uh, install the game and upload before I even play it. Then I go take a shower, I'll make dinner, then I come back and it's done. Like yesterday, I wanted to play uh, Battlefield Hardline. I went in, well, the update was like 43 minutes long to install the update, so I said, no problem, I'll just let's get it going now, and then later tonight I'll play it, but instead I ended up playing Mad Max, because I had such limited time, I didn't want to start getting into a story with only, you know, 40, 45 minutes, and really not enough time to delve into Battlefield Hardline, so even though I'm having a wonderful time with Mad Max, and so excited to be back in the saddle again, in the driver's seat with that game, <clears throat> at the same time, <clears throat> there's now, I, I'm motivated to play some other games, like this new Dishonored game, now I got this wonderful new Uncharted game I can't wait to experience. I don't know which Uncharted I'm going to play first. I'm tempted to go right in and start two, since I never really got too far into the second one and would like to play it. So, um... That's my, you know, my theory with it, you know, a lot of people complain about the updates, and it takes, you know, forever to install things, and for things to update, and the PlayStation 3 is kind of that way, too, but you just have to kind of plan ahead, knowing that that's uh, uh, a limitation of, of, you know, the, of these new-gen consoles, that's the best you can do, is just plan ahead, and just, you know, the minute you get home, let the game do its thing, install, do its update, and then when you're ready to play, you can play, so... I don't mind working around limitations as long as it's something that's a normal thing and it's not a broken game that breaks. When something breaks, with your console or with the game, it's no fun. <clears throat> and then it's game over. I mean, you can't you're proceed, you can't do anything. So uh, that's why I got so you know upset before, is it was not so much <clears throat> the fact the game breaks. You know, be patient, you know, a patch will come and all that. But it's when <laughs> that was a, I had a window of time to finish the game. I could have had the game done. And then that way I could have gone through and then replayed it at my leisure, but it is what it is. I'll get through it. I probably will have to wait until Christmas or January before I can even finish Mad Max, but that's okay. In the meantime, that's why I hop around so much with the games. I only have like an hour here, two hours there. Sometimes only, you know, 45 minutes like last night, and I just do the best I can with what I have. That's just what modern gaming has kind of turned into. But I, I can see now that what it really boils down to is patience. Whether you're waiting for a patch, or like with this new Fallout 4, believe me, no one wants to get that game at launch more than myself, but I'll be damned if I'm going to buy that game and then have a problem or glitches and I'm waiting for patch after patch. I'll wait months, and then I'll get the game, and who knows, I might even get it a little bit cheaper. I'm not opposed to doing I'm not doing it to save money and buy the game, you know, at half price or cheap, that, although that might be exactly what'll happen. If the game sells well, the, probably, the price will probably stay up there, but I'm going to be patient, you know, it's the same thing with, uh, 
uh, the other games. Uh, unfortunately, I'm boycotting Battlefront because of the omission of the single-player campaign and the very limited survival mode. I don't know if it's enough to warrant <clears throat> uh, to warrant buying the game, frankly. So uh, I'm going to wait and see on that. For right now, I have no plans on getting it. So you know, good luck if you're online and you want to play with your friends online. I certainly can understand that. And, I can't blame you. You know, it's Star Wars after all, and I know a lot of people are excited. But um, the beauty is, is that I have plenty of wonderful games. I still haven't played Dying Light yet. I haven't finished the new definitive edition of Sleeping Dogs, which I started and got a few hours into it. Never returned to it. I got Grand Theft Auto V, which you know, uh, I, I feel guilty. I mean, I'd love to play GTA V from the beginning again, but it's like God, the time is so limited, so valuable. I feel bad, you know, taking time away from new games I haven't even played to play something that I've already played and enjoyed. But I, I will play it and I will get to it because it's such an outstanding experience. So the key is is patience. I can see that now. You just have to have, with new gen gaming, it requires <clears throat> lots of patience. Patience to wait for games that work. Patience to wait for patches that you know, typically are, are, you know, required now. And that's why I have friends that, you know, played um, Skyrim. I've had two friends that played Skyrim and got many hours into it. And something to do with the RAM, you collect too many items and the game crashes. This is what happened with my nephew with Dead Island. Um, it happened with me with Mad Max. I, you know, I did too many side activities and I think it overloaded the game somehow. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand how it all works, but <clears throat> this seems to be a problem with a lot of these newer games. So because of the problems that Bethesda's had with Skyrim and bugs and buggy issues and uh, especially with you know Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 I'm just not going to take the chance. I'll wait. It'll work out. So back at the old homestead now. Get my garage door open here. I like to put my truck away. I don't like to leave it outside where it gets bird crap and stuff all over it. But <clears throat> park here for a minute. <clears throat> but that's what you know. New gen gaming's about, and that's what I realized. I you know I've calmed down and and said that uh, you know you just you're just going to have to work within the limitations of the games which you know so right off the bat half of them are online only like the crew or uh, they got this wonderful new hitman game which I initially was very excited about and then I find out it's an episodic thing where you get digital downloads you know through your Xbox one or PlayStation 4 over time and it's it doesn't work for me. I'll wait. I don't want to buy the game twice. I know I'm going to buy a physical copy. So I sent a tweet to one of the devs on the official Hitman you know uh, page or Twitter or whatever, and they immediately sent me back a, a response and says, "Don't worry. By 2016, uh, we'll have the whole story will be available on disc." And I said, "Well, that's great. I'll buy it then. Thank you for responding to my tweet. It only takes a minute to respond to the people that are buying your game." So. <clears throat> that's fine. So that, to me, that's what it's all about. You wait. You just wait for something to come. I, I'm tempted to get Drive Club because I've heard you can play it offline, but I, I'm going to have to talk to more people. It just it requires a lot of time and research. I want to know exactly what you get with offline play. I went on YouTube and looked, and I just typed in offline Drive Club, and you get lots of gameplay, but it doesn't tell. There's no rant on it. There's no one telling you what you get precisely how it works online or offline or whatever so <clears throat> i'm still waiting for a racing game they got this wonderful new gran turismo uh game that's coming out for the playstation 4 i don't know too much about it the graphics look fantastic but I i'm terrified it's going to be another online experience i'm waiting i'm sifting through information like god can someone let me know before i get too excited and invest all this energy in getting hyped for it just to find out it's another, you know, crew game or another online game, you know, like these other ones, like Forza 5 and Forza Horizon 2 and and uh, now this new Need for Speed, uh, you know, abortion that to me is an absolute abortion. If you cannot 
own it on disc and play it a couple years from now. It's just, it's it's like a here today, gone tomorrow experience. And people will get their money's worth. They'll pay the $60. They'll play the hell out of it for a year or so. And they, hey, you know, I got my, I got hundreds of hours in it. I got my 60 bucks worth. And that's fine if that's what you're into. But I believe if a game is worth playing, it's worth having in a collection. And it's certainly worth replaying. If it's good enough to play in the first place, then it should be good enough to save for posterity in a physical collection, which is why my big thing uh, with my channel on YouTube is just collecting games. I'm all about game collecting and posterity. <clears throat> it has to be a, a game that you can have offline. Uh, I just can't get into all of these MMOs and, you know, this new Rainbow Six games and <clears throat> the, uh, I guess, Division from Tom Clancy and uh, many other wonderful concepts. They're great concepts. The graphics look great. The graphics on the new Crackdown 3 game look fantastic, the new reboot, but I just won't do a cloud-type deal. So that's fine. What, you, what it's going to be is you're just going to have to be patient and you're going to have to sift and do your research and find out what is good about gaming for you. What works for you? If you want a game that's on disc, then you're going to have to be patient. I got impatient and bought Zombie Army Trilogy and uh, Wolfenstein <clears throat> The Old Blood right off in a digital download because I kept asking the devs. I said, will it be a physical copy? Well, not right now. You know, We'll see maybe down the road. It might be a possibility. And I wanted to play the game, so I bought both of them day one digital downloads now they're both available now i got to go out and pay full price for the zombie army trilogy again just to have the box to put on my shelf so <clears throat> i'm a big believer in you know owning a, a game collection i love my collection it killed me to even trade in my old uncharted ps3 games because they're such a vital part of my playstation 3 collection but if i can play a better version on a current gen i'm all for it which is why i'm big on you know the remastered and definitive games for me quite often many of the games i haven't played or played all the way through so it's great i'll get a chance to play them it's almost like playing them for the first time all over again on a new gen system and i get all the perks and bells and whistles with the share button on the playstation 4 sharing my gameplay and progress and it's fantastic that's one of the things that i love <clears throat> about the you know new gen gaming is some of these little gimmicks are fun to share on social media and Twitter or Facebook to share your gameplay and uh, screenshots and stuff like that. So <clears throat> let me know in the comments how you feel about uh, you know about the new gen gaming. Are you happy with it overall? I, I I know there's people that have lost patience with the constant updates and the constant changes with it, and I certainly understand. I, I just have found ways just to work around those limitations and make the best of it. So, And that's what I do with gaming today. You just make the best of it. Unfortunately, I am only <laughs> can play about half of the experiences out there because they just don't fit my personal criteria. So let me know in the comments, do you have a criteria? Does it matter to you one way or the other? What does a game have to be for you to, to break down and buy it? Um, what kind of an experience would make you want to buy a new gen system? Are you wait, would it take a certain type of game or franchise? Oh, that's it. I've got to get an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. I'm just curious. So leave that in the comments. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Just kind of a random rant. Just, it's wonderful to have a little time off and to be able to talk about something um, that I love so much, which is gaming. And that's what this whole YouTube thing is about. So thanks very much for watching and enjoy your games. <music>